In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to create a machine simulation. Uh, for this machine simulation video, we're going to use the Pocket NC version 2. Um, this is a little small machine, um, uh, but it will show you the ideas and principles be behind building pretty much any machine out there. <clears throat> so we'll start with the model here. Uh, there's some things you need to be aware of when building the model. So we want to be in a metric configuration here. Um, we want our model scaled to metric. And then um, we, we want a sim simplified model here. So we don't, it, it all depends on how much detail you want in the model. Um, in this case, we have very block-like um, parts of the, the machine. They're not exactly perfect to, to real life, but the important parts of the machine are you know, the spindle nose, the table, that's all very accurate. Um, so that will be reflected in the machine simulation and should work well. So the thing we need to start out with is we need this machine at, the, this is a five axis machine, it's a horizontal. Um, if you look at our axes here, right, the Z axis is pointing out this way. So we need that Z axis of the gnomon pointing in the same direction that the spindle is going to be coming in. So we want the Z axis to be down, looking down that end of the spindle. The other thing we want is that gnomon to be centered on the center of rotation of the machine and the spindle face to be located uh, on that zero point. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dynamic transform this machine to that location. So dynamic. Uh, I'm going to grab the center of that rotary and I'm going to move the gnomon to the center of that rotary, okay? And now I'm just gonna move this down to the origin. Okay, so now we're centered on the origin. The thing is that z-axis is not pointing the right direction. We've actually gotta rotate this at 90 degrees. So we get that off to 90 degrees, right? So now that spindle is looking down along the z-axis. We'll hit okay there. Actually, I'm gonna do a check plus because now we need to move this z-axis and all its components down to the center. That spindle face, that reference position that the holder is going to be against, has to be at the origin. So I'm going to enter here. I'm going to grab this spindle face here, and I'm going to slide that right down to the origin and hit. Okay. So now you see we're actually in like a collision state, right? This isn't where the machine is actually going to be able to move to, uh, that z-axis cannot travel along that x-axis carrier uh, that close to the origin. But it gives us a reference and we can later on, we can set the uh, limits of where that z-axis will actually be able to travel. Same for the rotaries. Okay. So now that I've got that done, what I really want to do is organize, I find this the most useful, is to go and organize this model in such a way that the different categories that are going to be moving um, will be all on the same level. That'll really help me uh, build, you know, to organize the machine when I have to save off these SDLs to run in the machine simulator. So what I'll do is I'll group like these, and actually this holder, we don't even really need that holder as part of it because that holder is going to be a dynamic element um, that will come in from Mastercam. Mastercam will read that into the machine simulation. So that's actually not really important. We can actually even delete that. Um, but what I'll do is I'll group these into one level set. Then I'll go down because that's all moving on the z-axis. That's all z-axis geometry. Uh, this carrier, let me shut those off. Just, I'm just highlighting these to show you what I would copy to levels. This carrier will be moving along the x-axis, so I've, I'll move that to a separate level. Uh, this whole machine base, that will be moved to a separate level because that's going to be the base of the machine. This will be, cut that off, this will be the y-axis and we'll actually include some of these components. Um, so that'll be mounted up along on the y-axis. Um, shut that off. This table area, you know, that'll all be grouped in a level. That will be our A axis that's rotating about X. Um, and then this will be our B axis table. So we want to get all those organized and on separate levels. If you had a machine housing uh, geometry that included a machine housing, you'd probably want to move that to a separate level. 
Okay, so I've moved all that stuff to different levels. Um, as you can see in this, in my level set here, if I shut all levels off, uh, all levels set off, you can see I've got my x-axis carrier. If I come down to here, there's my machine base. And labeling these to, resp to respect what they're going to be is helpful because it helps me save them off later as STLs. And that's what the, the components will actually be called in the machine simulation. So spindle assembly, um, the holder, we deleted that. So we've got our y-axis base. We've got our b-axis rotary. Turn this on. Uh, we've got our B-axis uh, rotary base here. And I also added in a table to set the machine on. And I added some, some details here, right? I got black and white master cam on the table or black and red master cam on the table. Um, I've also got it over here. I've got a pocket NC emblem and a laptop. So if we turn all this on, Right? Now we can see this machine in position, and we can actually use these other components, this table, the laptop, all these other emblems as um, machine housing components. So if you were doing a more complex machine where you actually had sheet metal, um, these would be like your, your sheet metal components, and you can actually add you know, a master cam emblem to it, some, some machine-specific emblems to that. Uh, they, have to be, you know, they have to be solid components uh, because they're going to be SDLs once we export them. And to get the different colors, those have to be different STLs. So you'll see I have like the black master, I have that on one level by itself, and then I have the red cam on another level because I can only specify colors on a per uh, STL or per solid basis. So I need those separately if I want to make them different colors. Same thing here, if like if I wanted my spindles you know, different components of the spindle to be different colors, I would have to save those off as separate STLs and add them individually so I can control the color of them. Um, for the sake of what we're going to go through here, I don't really care, so I'm just going to save them all off as one. All right, so now what you want to do is you want to create a folder on your, uh, anywhere on your computer, it's not a big deal, where, where that location is, and you want to save those off uh, as STLs individually on that, in that folder and keep them all in one folder. That will make it easier. So I'm going to go to File, Save Some. I'm just going to select, you know, the components I want to save. And I'm going to make a new folder here. So a new folder, and I'm going to say STLs for mock sim. Okay, so that's going to be the folder I'm going to save to. I'm going to save this as an STL. And I'm going to call this well, right now we're calling that the spindle assembly. So I'll call that Z axis spindle assembly. Okay, saved as an STL, that's important. Save. Okay, so I've got that saved off. And normally what I'll do, you know, we just did the spindle assembly, but I'll walk down through my file here. I'm gonna shut all level sets off. Uh, so that now I've just got my X carrier on the screen. File, save some. Grab that x-axis, go into that same folder. Again, we want to save off as an STL. And we'll call this uh, x-axis carrier. Okay, STL, that's important. Save. And we're literally just going to walk down through all these different levels and save them off. So again, file, save some. Go back into that folder, save as an STL and we'll call this machine base. <clears throat> and we hit save. And we're gonna do this for every single, obviously we don't need to do that holder, we talked about that already. We're gonna do that for every single component. File, save some, grab that chunk, and STL for machine sim, we wanna save it as an STL, and we're gonna call this Y axis. Oh axis base. Save. Again, I know I said this before, but you want to check yourself. You want to make sure that you're in metric here. Okay? Can't say that enough. Make sure you're in metric while building the machine sim. If you're going to use this an inch later on, it's pretty straightforward to go in and convert the machine simulation to inch after the fact.
Okay, at this point, we've saved off all the different components of the machine. Um, so I've got the A axis, B axis, I've got that master for the, you know, the black, for the master cam emblem here, I've saved off the black uh, portion of that to one area, I've saved the red uh, cam portion to another area. And I've got all these different um, STLs in here. Okay, so we've got that all saved off now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, uh, we've got to launch a machine sim. This is the easiest way that, that I've found to, to do this, is I'll actually go in and just really quickly make a machine group here. Um, and I'll do a, just a quick contour operation because I need something to simulate. That's fine. Just anything. It doesn't really matter, right? So now we've got a, we've got a tool path. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what plane. I, I'm just trying to launch machine simulation here. That's the, that's the goal. So now I go to machine, launch this machine simulation here, and I can use any machine sim I want. It does not matter. So I'll just pick this VMC uh, or even a five axis, that's fine. Hit simulate. Okay, this is gonna launch your machine simulation environment. So now that I'm in my machine sim, what I do, I mean, this is not the right machine I wanna do, but I wanna actually go in and go into edit mode here and create a new machine. I'm gonna say new machine. So we start with a blank machine environment, okay? So from there, I'm just gonna save this, I'm gonna save this machine off. Um, in that same folder that I was building everything in. So I'll navigate out to that anywhere anywhere it is, but here we have this STL for machine sim. And I'm gonna call this, uh, yeah, we'll call this Pocket NC version two. Okay, we've got it saved off. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. All right, so the key here is, now we need to bring in the stationary portions of our machine. In this case, it would be the sheet metal and the machine casting, the base, um, any of that stuff. So because we talked about we're gonna use that table and the laptop and those emblems as kind of like what you would do for a normal sheet metal housing on a machine, um, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna right click on, the, on this machine tree. We're gonna say add geometry. And I'm gonna go in and add uh, that table, that workbench. There's the workbench, okay? And you'll see that it comes in relative to how you save those STLs uh, relative to that, the way your plane was set up, your WCS, inside of Mastercam. Okay, so we've got the workbench. I'm gonna add geometry. I'm gonna bring in that laptop. And just keep bringing in all these different components. Okay, red cam, add geometry, black master. Um, and then we want the machine base as well. Machine base. There we go. So we've got a um, bunch of our components in there. Now we said we wanted to make the table, these emblems, and the laptop part of the machine housing or the sheet metal of the machine. So all I gotta do is go in here and right click on it and say make machine housing. Make machine housing. Make machine housing. Make machine housing, okay? So now all those are machine housing. When, if I'm in the simulation, I have this machine housing button. When I click that, I can make all those components that have the MH in them, either transparent or shut on and off. So I'm gonna leave that as is for now, but I do wanna make these different colors, right? So I'm gonna make the workbench, uh, like to make it a, a wood brown color. So I can go in right down here, right? Click a color, I can also hit other and select any of, any number of colors I want. For the laptop, we'll leave that a gray. The red cam, I wanna make that red. The black master, we're gonna make that black, right? And you can see how we're getting some of those different components, okay? Um, so we've got the base in there and same thing with the base. We can make that a different color. I'm gonna make it a kind of a, a darker gray here. Okay, there we go, all right? So that, that's all the, the stationary components. So that's your machine casting, your sheet metal, any of your graphics or 
or uh, stuff that you're going to put on the sheet metal or the windows of the sheet metal, you go in there and you can change that. You can also go in and uh, mess with the transparency here, the reflectivity of that part, any of that stuff. So for the time being, we're just going to leave that alone. Now we've got to add actual movement to this machine and add axes. So that's what, that's what we're going to do next. So what we've got to do is we've got to add the first axes that everything depends on. And in the case of this machine, it may vary machine to machine. That is the x-axis. So we're going to click on the main machine here and say add translational axis. So there's rotary and there's translational. Um, a x-axis is a linear axis. It's a translational axis. So we say add x. We'll see that that pops up here. And it shows the direction that the x-axis is moving in the positive direction. So now we need to add the components, add geometry, to that x-axis. In this case, it will be the x-axis carrier. We can go in and change the color of that if we want to our dark gray color. OK. And then on top of that x-axis now, we're going to add the z-axis because that sits on top of the x. So we're not going to click on the main machine because the, the z is actually relies. It's built on top of the x. So we're going to click on the x and say add translational axis, z-axis. Okay, if we click on the Z now, we see the positive Z direction right there. So now we're going to add some geometry to that. And in this case, we're going to grab our spindle set here, the spindle assembly. And we can change the color of that too. And you'll notice where that spindle comes in here. It's got that spindle nose up against the, uh, no, the, the origin, just as we modeled the part inside of Master. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we want to go in and add our next axis. In this case, it'll be the Y. It's going to be up on this tower of the machine, on the machine base. So we're not going to do that under X or under Z because the Y does not move with those axes, right? It moves independently against the machine base. So we're going to click on the main machine and say add translational axis, Y axis. All right, and you'll see the positive direction for that y-axis. And we can add geometry to that. Add geometry. Y-axis carrier base. Okay, and we can go in and change the color of that if we want. But now you've got that component riding up against the machine base there. And there we go. And as I said, if we wanted to, you know, maybe this uh, servo motor here, we want to make that a different color and not all the same color because right now we can't differentiate different components of this, right? It's one solid, it's one SDL, one body here, one mesh. So in order to make these different, we would have to save that off as a separate component and add more geometry into there and change the color here and it would have a different name. But for the case of this example, we're not going to bother doing that. <clears throat> so on top of the y-axis now, we need to add a rotary axis. And that rotary is going to rotate about X, which will be a A axis component. And you'll see that's nested on top of the Y. If we click on the A axis, we can see what the positive direction is um, and see what that, see where the rotary is. Okay? So we're going to add some geometry to that. And in this case, it will be the A axis table base. You can see how it's important that I name these things correctly. Otherwise, it's hard to know what I'm clicking on when I'm building the machine. And there's the A-axis base. Again, we can, we'll make that a little bit lighter gray so we can tell the difference. There we go. Okay, so what do we need to do on top of this A? Well, we need to add a B now. So again, we're not going to click on the Y. It's dependent on top of the A. So we're going to add it to the A, add rotational axis, B axis. And again, add some geometry to that. And in this case, the B axis rotary table. And we'll actually leave that the color that it is. All right. So now we have basically all our components of our machine in there. We have our machine housing. Um, we have some detail with the master cam emblem here. Um, and everything's basically built at this point good idea to save the machine now. And it's going to save in that location that we initially did. Okay, so as of right now, if you tried to move this machine around, 
you really can't, right? If I open up my axis control, there's nothing there. The machine's kind of in a dead state. Even if I get out of the edit mode, launch my axis control, nothing there. The machine's kind of dead. So what I need to do is, in order to, to add some uh, more detail to this machine at this point, what I'm going to suggest we do is we exit out of machine simulation, come back in, reload this machine, um, and then we'll, we'll, it'll be live at that point. Kind of needs to reset. Okay, so now we're going to exit out of the machine sim. We've, we've saved it off. Uh, X out. All right, we're back into our file here. Uh, you don't have to wait a couple seconds for machine for the machine simulation to discard, and then I'm gonna rerun it. Okay. So again, just pick any old machine; it doesn't matter. You won't see your machine in this list yet. We'll get to that later on. So we'll hit simulate, and if you get a warning when you hit simulate, just wait a couple seconds; it'll clear. Uh, now I'm gonna open my machine, navigate to that folder that I had, pocket NC, open that, and we'll see our machine is back here. Okay. Now what you'll see is a little different if we go into the view here and turn on our axis controls. Now I have live control. Okay. So you can see I can move the machine around, uh, all different things. The one thing you'll notice is this is not necessarily good behavior, right? I don't, my y-axis should not go that high, right? So now what we need to do is we need to go in and program uh, limits for where this machine can actually travel to. Okay, so I'm going to dock that axis control on there. I don't need this analysis tab for now. Uh, and I actually want all of those different axis control on. Let's see. So we can see B there. All right, so we'll start with X. Um, and you'll see right now it goes a thousand millimeters in both directions, right? That's far too, far too much. Um, if you know what your actual machine limits are in regard to the center of rotation, it's really easy. Again, I got to go into edit mode, but it's really easy to go into my X and just type those limits in right here. In this case, I'm not exactly sure what the limits are. I'm going to go out and kind of just query the machine simulation and say, all right, my X should be a maximum of... 57 millimeters and the negative somewhere there so minus 57 minus 57 okay so now you'll see my x look max travel limits stop where i want them so that's good um if we look at the y now uh, we'll say all right y limit is somewhere around 65 so we want to highlight the y-axis here the y limit is somewhere around 65 and we look at it from this direction let's say the negative limit at this point is negative 65. now again this is me just putting values in here i'm not being I'm not reflecting what's actually happening in the real world. Um, if you're building a real machine, you're going to know what these limits are, or you can go out there and jog the machine around and see what those limits are, and then build respectively to that. So with the Z, you know, I don't want it to go all the way out there. It should stop somewhere, you know, somewhere in that area. So about 160 maybe. So Z. Let's go. Let's jog this down a little bit. Probably about there, so 165. The minimum, probably gonna go somewhere out there. Uh, it looks like 65. So now you'll see, we looked at it before. Um, you know, before we were coming way out there, now there, our Z only travels to 65 millimeters. It doesn't even get, make it to that, to the center of rotation. Whether that's true or not for your specific machine, uh, that's going to be up to you. The A-axis, the A-axis does not pivot infinitely like we're showing here. So in this case, the A goes to about 100 degrees. So let's grab the A-axis. 100. And this goes to about minus 10. 
Okay. So that's the A. And the B, yeah, that might actually be true. You know, a thousand degrees in each direction is probably more like 10,000. But for the sake of this discussion, we'll probably leave those limits alone. <clears throat> okay. And if you have to, uh, say you have a nutating machine, you can always figure out what that uh, vector is going to be. Uh, maybe it's at a 45, so you've got 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Um, you know, it, it depends. In this case, you know, the, the B axis is going along the Y, so it's a 0, 1, 0 um, in the Y direction. So that'll, that'll point the B axis along the proper axis. So the, these all kind of come in by default to build a standard machine type. You start getting into something that's a little more on the outskirts of a conventional coordinate system uh, where you have some of these nutating setups, you're gonna have to start messing with this direction and get this uh, vector set up properly. And maybe it doesn't rotate about the zero. Again, you'll have to, you'll have to change that here to reflect what the machine is actually doing. But we're not gonna go into that for the sake of this. All right, so now we have the limits set up. Uh, we have all our colors done. We have our machine housing. Just to show you the machine housing side of things, right? Now that anything with an MH in here has gone transparent, I click on it again, and it goes away. All right, so that's what that machine, that MH does to the, uh, to the machine simulation. All right, so now we're actually, we're, we're pretty good. Um, what we need to do now we need to save the machine off. Oh, we never set our initials. Forgot to do that. So the z-axis, it says I have initial value at zero, but yet I said it can only travel between 65 and 165. So I'm going to set this at 165. So basically the initial value is at the home position. And I'll do that for all the linear axes. All right, for x, 57 would be the home position. Uh, for y, we'll set that down at, actually at the negative 65. All right, so now that machine's positioned like that at the home position. So you do want to do those initial values as well and make sure they're within your machine limits. All right, now I'll save it off and it should be fine. Okay, now I'm going to go into how we will make this available for in the actual folder to to access it through the machine sim in the Mastercam product. So let's do that now. Okay, now that we've got all our limits set, the last thing we want to do is, um, right now we have no way of telling the holder, Mastercam, well we, we, are, we did tell where the holder and tool will go, right? We did that here with that dynamic element on the z-axis, but we never told the machine where the part would actually sit on the table. So we've got to go in and do that and add a dynamic element to the B-axis. So I'm going to right-click, um, add dynamic element, expand that out, and now I'm going to add a workpiece set to that B-axis. And there you'll see you'll get the workpiece, fixture, stock, initial stock, rule path. Okay? And, and we can actually go in and, and uh, you know, look at how that's going to lay out. So that's how Mastercam translates that information into the machine simulation for your stock setup, your workpiece fixturing, that sort of thing. Okay, so now that we've got that in there, we can uh, save our machine off, we can leave edit mode, and I wanna go into now how we're gonna arrange the folder structure to get, to make this machine sim available for selection inside the Mastercam product when we go to launch the machine simulation. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, how to set up the folder structure. So we'll X out of that. We look in our folder structure here, and what we're going to want to do is go over into um, that folder we created here, right? This is STL for Machine Sim. You're going to see we now have an XML document in there, right? We can also add a GIF document, which will show up as the picture for in the Machine Sim. But I'm going to copy all these out. Right? And I'm going to paste those into the machine sim folder under machine sim, mock sim. And I'm going to create a new folder called pocket NC. And I'm going to paste all that data in here. Okay? So 
if this was blank, which it normally would be, we'd paste all that information that we just created. The XML file, any, um, all the STLs have to go in there with it, as well as a GIF if we want the, the image to show up when we're selecting the machine sim, we want that GIF file. So if we look at that, here's the file that I put in there. Okay? So now, if we go back into the Mastercam product here, right, and we go to our machine sim pet tab, we now have the Pocket NC V2 in there. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that in that folder structure, I'll show you here. So it's in 2018, machine sim, mock sim, right, Pocket NC V2. That name is going to want to correspond to the XML as well as the GIF. All those names are going to have to be the same. Okay? As long as you do that, it'll show up in your drop-down. We have the GIF here. The picture shows up. We hit simulate. But now you can see that holder that we defined in MASHCAM. That's just the default one. We probably want something a little more realistic. But you can see that the, the holder comes in uh, where we specified. And if we turned on, if we had a work piece specified inside of MASHCAM, that would all show up in the proper location. And now we can control that machine, it's within our limits that we specified. Um, so everything works pretty good. And that's basically how you're gonna build a machine sim.